Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to do the predictions and breakdowns for UFC Fight Night, Brandon Moreno versus Amir Al-Bazi, which is coming to you on November the 2nd, 2024 in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We're going to start with the prelims and with the main event. Let's get started right away. We're going to start with the opening prelim of Jack Shore versus Yusuf Zalal. We're going with Yusuf Zalal. He's like one of the most impressive uh, prospects at 145 right now. Uh, left the UFC after losing to Teporia, lost to Sean Woodson, uh, the, uh, Korean Superboy. Uh, and Jack Shore just kind of looks like shit right now. Uh, his last fight against Jordan Sembrito. Looked like he was, like, in every one of his fights, he starts slow. Uh, Yusuf Zalal is going to put the pressure on him right away. Uh, he's probably going to win the first two rounds. Jack is probably going to try and take out the third round, and it's not going to matter. Uh, Yusuf Zalal is way better on the feet, really good on the ground, really impressive skills. A lot, a lot of uh, rear naked chokes recently. Uh, been taking guys down, grabbing their back, almost instantly getting the body triangle in and choking them out within, like, five minutes. They don't usually make it out of the first round within his last three fights, I think. Uh, Jack Shore had a big problem against Jordan Zimbrito, Brito being a really good uh, prospect, but again, opened up a huge cut on his shin and uh, lost that fight, even though it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He was losing the first two rounds, he was getting his ass whooped, and he just doesn't have the type of stand up that's going to get him through the 145 division. These guys at top 15 are, are, are absolute demolishers. And Yusuf Zalal showed a lot of improvement leaving the UFC. I know I always say that uh, when guys make a second stint inside the UFC, we're not ever going to look at them, we're never going to think about them. Uh, he's proving me wrong, he, uh, taking out Billy uh, Quarantillo, taking out Jarno Ahrens. I mean, these are pretty decent guys, especially to come back from losing against like Sean Woodson and Shang Wun uh, Cho, or Shang Wun Choi, excuse me, uh, Superboy. It's just, I really want to pick Jack Shore, bro. It's just, he, he's, his best one being Tamora Valiev inside the UFC, and he's been inside the UFC since, I think, 2021 or 2020. I... I I would think at this point he'd be fighting better competition, he'd be fighting better guys, and unfortunately, uh, he just hasn't been getting done. He's one of those cage warrior guys that came into the UFC and fought lower level competition. He's not the same level at all, and Yusuf Salah is going to probably take him out of here. Uh, he's just way better, again, making his rounds through the regional scene again to try and improve and come back. He's back and he's better than he was. I'm going with Yusuf Solal. Next on the prelims, we have Jamie Lynn Horth versus uh, Ivana Petrovic. We're going with Jamie Lynn Horth, and it's because Ivana Petrovic is just going to run takedowns. She's just going to try and force Jamie Lynn Horth to the ground, and if Horth gets to the ground, I think she has enough energy to explode up once or twice, and Ivana looked like she completely gassed against Luana Carolina, who is a Muay Thai fighter, and if a Muay Thai fighter is able to outgrapple you and stuff all of your takedowns. Jamie Lynn Horth, who is a very decent wrestler, is going to be able to do the same. Losing to Veronica Hardy to a split decision, very, very, very close fight. Rewatched it. Uh, I thought it could have gone either way. Um, Horth, very explosive. She waits for her counter strikes. You know, Vaughn is going to try and go in. And Jamie Lynn Horth, I think he's going to back up and just counter strike her the whole time. She doesn't have the reach advantage, but Ivana Petrovic is not going to stand behind her jab. She's going to try and uh, just force her single leg and try and get the choke. Because she's so used to being able to choke these girls out inside the second and third round or knock them out. You're, like, you're going to a decision with Jamie Lynn Horth, and Horth is going to put the fucking pressure on her. Sitting at a minus 200 favor, everyone's picking Petrovic. Uh, the line, if you're on the betting side, wait until Saturday night because I bet you this line's going to get closer and closer and closer and you can stack your money on Horth. I just, I don't see a, a way that Horth loses. 34 years of age isn't old for a girl, uh, especially uh, these days. And I can see her definitely out grappling Ivana Petrovic inside the first round, maybe losing the first round because of a late takedown. But being able to overcome that inside the second and third round and just land big strikes and maybe take uh, Petrovic out. I should be very impressive if Horth because she's really strong on the feet, man. She's really explosive, really good kicks. Her left hand's fucking absolutely unreal. Yeah, I think Jamie Lynn Horth's gonna get it done. Let's see here. Like, Haley Cohen is not really good. But, you know, it her skill level's just way better. Veronica Hardy, I think, is way better than Ivana Petrovich and giving... Veronica Hardy, one of her hardest fights inside the UFC in the last fucking five years. I mean, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to take Jamie Lynn Horth. All right, next on the prelims, we have Chad N. Helliger. Helliger? And Chad N. Helliger? Jesus Christ, these names. Versus Cody Gibson. I wanted to pick Chad, man, but I think we're going Cody Gibson. Uh, huge for the weight class. 5'10", 71 inches of reach. This fucking absolutely no way 
in hell that uh, Chad has any chance. <laughs> like Cody just towers over everyone. Uh, just fought Brian Kelleher. Just absolutely mauled him. Fought Brad Katona. Had a really uh, competitive fight against him. Um, losing to Ray Borg, though, like... Again, this is I, I, another dude who made a second stand inside the UFC. Chad Ann Helliger just took out Char, uh, Gregoru. I'm not going to try and say the first name, Gregoru. But, like, lost to the Mongolian Knight. Lost to Joseph Johnson. These are tough losses, man. I really want to pick Chad, though. It's just... Seeing Cody Gibson fight, man, he's just so much bigger than Chad. He's just going to... I have a feeling he's going to ragdoll him. Yeah, it's a big problem for Chad. I think Chad's going to have a big problem with the fact that Cody is not going to give a shit. He's going to wade into the fire. Chad's really like an in-and-out fighter. He likes to take his time, do a one-two, move to the side, maybe a left hook, kick. Cody Gibson's just going to walk forward and grab him. And if Cody Gibson grabs you, you have a problem. Especially at 5'6", Cody Gibson's just going to like lay on top of Chad. He's probably going to beat the shit out of him, lay some ground and pound, get another arm triangle victory like he just did to Brian Kelleher. But I can see a... I can see, I, I can envision at least a night where Chad pops in and out, you know, pops a couple nice jabs, moves really well, and is able to get the victory off of Cody Gibson, who just tries to force a takedown and gets frustrated not getting it. But Cody Gibson's so big, man. He's got nice kicks. Like, he's just going to keep Chad at range. And it, when he wants the takedown, he's just going to rush for it. Uh, we're going to go with Cody Gibson. It's tough, man, but Chad's just so much smaller, man. And when you see a guy that small and the line's... So close, you might as well take the favorite. That's tough. It's going to be a tough fight for Chad, but especially in in Canada, at least he'll have the crowd behind him. He'll have a little bit of hype. It's just... Yeah. Cody Gibson's so big, man. Just watch his recent fights, man. Even the Miles Johns fight. Like, Miles Johns beats everybody, but look how big Cody Gibson is. Like, it's actually unreal. Next on the prelims, we have Sari City versus Garrett Armfield. We're going with Sari City. Way better striker, arguably ten and one or eleven and one. Did not lose to Ramon Tavares. That's jokes. Won round two and three. Got dropped in the first half of the fight and then just came on in the second and beat the shit out of Ramon Tavares. Only losing to Mateo Vogel, who's inside the UFC at this point. Oh no, he sorry, he was just on the contender series last year. That's that's right. I forgot he lost to Timothy or Timmy Cumbia. I forgot and Cumbia's on a two lot skid, eh? Yeah. I like Garrett Armfield. I do. He just doesn't have the powers that he has. He only works his boxing, doesn't in involve the kicks at all, and Sari City's going to beat the shit out of that front lead leg. His lead leg's going to be a big problem. Brady, uh, Brady Heasted just came out of the Contender Series, and uh, well, I think this is his first UFC win was on Garrett Armfield, right? Oh my god, what? Brady Heasted's been in the UFC for that long? Bro, maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Anyway. Um, Brady he said took him out inside the third round. Uh, it was a, a nice submission, but Garrett Armfield does have a win over Brad Katona. Arguable. Uh, I mean, I thought Brad could have won the second and third round, but you know, it, or the first and second. Uh, is it first and second? I think first and second. Um, Cosma win. You know, whatever. Cosma is getting knocked out by everyone except for Gregorio somehow. Uh, even though Gregorio literally dropped him and finished him, and then. So he just comes, Kazuma comes back to life like fucking Orobai like, this past weekend. Um, it's just, it's, dude, City's more powerful, uh, more explosive, involves the kicks. He's from Ontario. He's five foot eleven at fucking 135. He's giant. He outframes Garrett Armfield, who's not going to involve any wrestling. And City's probably just going to out, out. Box him. It's just, it's, I think City's going to get a knockout. I think City's going to piece up Garrett Armfield. I think Garrett Armfield has a really big problem inside um, this fight. Like, it's just, he does, he does not have any advantage in this fight. I don't see any advantage he has. This line's kind of ridiculous. Should be like a minus 220 for Sari City. Um, Sari City's impressive, man. And, and don't, like, people just look at the record, man. Watch the fights. Watch the Mateo Vogel fight. It's a, it's it's a good watch, man. It's a good watch. It, it Sari City worked on a lot of shit after that. Like you, it's a lot of improvement out of the side of Sari City. Won his last fight. A lot of ambition. He has heart. 
It's just, I don't think he has this, like, Bra- Garrett Armfield does not have the same heart that fucking Sari City has. When you see him fight, man, he just doesn't have it. Oh, it's kind of funny that both of these guys have lost to uh, Matteo Vogel, eh? Anyway, yeah, Sari City by knockout. Uh, I think the, the the fact that he outframes Garrett Armfield this much, the power of Sari, Sari City, he's gonna, I think he's going to chew up the front lead leg. Garrett Armfield's going to start crumbling on that leg. Not going to be able to explode as well, going to get pushed against the cage. Sari City's going to light him up with some nice body shots and uh, end it with a shot to the head. We're going to go next on the prelims, Alexander Romanov versus Rodrigo Nascimento. I kind of sat on this for a while. I think I'm going to agree with <clears throat> everyone else. I think Romanov's just going to outgrapple Rodrigo Nascimento. But Romanov's fat as shit, man. 265? Are you fucking kidding me? He used to fight at like 235, I think. I think his last fight at 235 was the Tybura fight. Fought Volkov at what? 265. Ivanov at 264. Tybura at 239. I mean, Chase Sherman at 236, like, he used to be way fucking skinnier, man, now he's just eating whatever he wants, thinks he's fucking Derek Lewis, and he's gonna be able to just walk in and beat the fuck out of people, because he likes to brawl, um, Romanov should, if he's the Romanov that we all remember, which, it's hard to keep a good memory when he looks like shit the last fucking four years, especially through COVID, um, He's going to outgrapple Rodrigo Nascimento. He's going to take him to the ground. He's going to ground and pound him, and then he's going to probably submit him with a rear naked choke. But Rodrigo Nascimento is a very good grappler, and he that's exactly what he tried to do to Derek Lewis. He tried to outgrapple Derek Lewis, which he did in the first round. Inside the second round, Derek was like, fuck you. Inside that third round, he said, I want to go home. And Nascimento took a nice nap, and I can see Romanov probably doing the same thing to him. It's just he's a little bit smaller. Rodrigo Nascimento is a big boy, long reach. They are similar in height, but the, the reach is a big problem here, especially that Nascimento has a really nice jab, really big hands. He's going to pop that fucking face. Romanoff, Romanoff likes to lay that one-two counter shot. Uh, I just don't think Rodrigo is going to be there. I think Romanoff's going to need to force the wrestling. And if Nascimento breaks off a takedown, bro, and he sprawls and he stops it, Romanov's going to be in for a tough night of front kicks and left hooks. <laughs> like, he's going to get stuck, King Kong's just going to fucking fall, he's going to drop the girl, and he's going to be fucking laid out on the floor. It's just, it's going to be over, man. Like, it's just, I don't, I really hope Romanov learned from his last losses, man. I hope he learned from the Volkov fight that you can't just fucking bully everyone. I hope he learned from the Almeida fight that Guys are going to take you down. There's always going to be someone better than you in your in your fucking field of work. And I hope Nazi Mental learned that you can't just always fucking run at people. Because Romanov's a very nice counterpuncher, man. He's going to get tagged up if he keeps doing that. I just don't... It's really tough for me to see a world where Nazi Mental gets through three rounds and wins a decision. Because Romanov's such a more complete fighter than him. He's been in the top 15 for at least three years. Like, he's fought, he's fought the, the top guys. It's just like... The, the Ivnov fight, like or Ivnov, whatever you want to fucking call him, uh, Belogoy, Belogoy, Blagoy, Jesus Christ, I don't know, man. Where is he from? Russia? No, Bulgaria. Meh. Still, all these like Balkan names and shit. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna go next on the prelim again. In the picks is Alexander Romanov over two and a half rounds. Well. Ooh. Over two and a half. Ah, but, but if the under two and a half rounds, like plus 200, you're taking it. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Romanoff's live for a submission, I think. Even a knockout. Again, good counter punching. Next in the prelims. Is it top of the prelims yet? Yeah. No, that's Eamon. All right. Charles Jordan versus Victor Henry. Going Charles Jordan. Victor Henry is just getting older, getting a little bit slower. Beat the shit out of Yaya, but. Yeah, yeah, is kind of on his way out. He just, he, like, he's old as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, almost 40. Uh, he's been in the UFC for a very long time. We really appreciate his tenure. Um, it's just that it's getting to the point, man, where it's like, it's over. Like, it's over. You need to get out of the UFC. Yeah, yeah, needs to get out of the UFC. Victor Henry's still showing improvement, still showing that he's there. It's just like, he, like, what's his last big win? Barcelos? Barcelos is old, though. Like, this is not the same Barcelos we remember. Um, older, I should say. He's just tenured, man. He's just he's he's been beat up a couple times in his life. Um, I Charles Jordan just very quick, 
very explosive, uh, mixes up everything, uses everything to his advantage, and I think he's he, this is going to be a tune-up fight for him. I think this is a, a great fight to get him back inside the win column. I think um, Victor Henry is going to be a very tough test for Charles Jourdain. I just think with the win uh, over uh, Ricardo Ramos, he showed a lot of improvement. Um, the Jean Silva fight, he was doing okay inside that first round, but Jean Silva is just an absolute fucking demolisher. He's fighting inside Ontario, or, or, uh, Canada. He'll have the hype of the crowd behind him. I'm hoping he's improved a little bit on his takedowns because if he can, he, if he can take Victor Henry down, he's going to have a very, very successful evening. He just needs to get him down to the ground. If he can just put on half guard and just lay a couple shots and just sit there, you're going to have a very fucking successful night. It's just stay away from the from the counter shots of victor henry stay away from from his big blitzes and as long as we stay away from that we just land nice leg kicks and we and we damage the arms of victor henry by landing some shots up top and we just bash our shin to his fucking arms we're gonna get away from that danger side and hopefully charles jordan realizes that he's watched the tape he understands what he has to do and he's being the bigger framed guy he's gonna put the grappling to work and just fucking chop at Victor Henry. I'm really hoping he, he understands that that's the path of victory because if he doesn't, he, he's going to be in it for a tough night of Victor Henry just counter countering everything that he's doing just like Jean Silva did. And uh, <clears throat> we need to learn from these losses if we're going to be in the side of the UFC. Next to the prelims, Ariane Lipsky versus Jasmine Jasvidikas. Jasvidikas is just going to rest the fucker. Ariane Lipsky is going to just sit on the ground. That's just what's going to happen. Jasmine's probably going to get a submission. She's going to sit there. I'm telling you, she's going to sit there. She's, she's going to find an arm triangle. Lipsky's going to try and move, give up her back, give up, get flattened out, something. <clears throat> Lipsky doesn't do well against wrestlers, doesn't do well against girls who have a lot of pressure, doesn't do well against girls who, who like, bully her, and Jasmine's going to bully her. Never does well against wrestlers. Never does well against the girls who who land big shots and then just shoot for a double. Jasmine Jasavidikis is literally just gonna fucking stalk her. She's gonna land some nice shots because she's the longer fighter. Gonna like, probably stick behind that jab for the first fucking forty five seconds or something. She's gonna shoot for a takedown. And she's gonna get her down. That's just what's gonna happen. Um, there's not much you can do. There's really not much you can do. I don't know what what you what. Like, I don't know what Lipsky can do. I don't know if she's improved on her takedown defense at all. I don't know if uh, anything's changed in the last five months. I'm going to say no because it's been the last fucking six years I've watched her fight. Jasmine's going to bully her. That's just my uh, prediction. Jasmine's got really nice wins. Undefeated Fatima Klein got taken out. The donut uh, gets turned into a churro. We have uh, a loss over Tracy Cortez, but you know Tracy Cortez is one of those girls who's going to stay at the top ten for a long time. Miranda Maverick win, very impressive. Uh, bullied the bullier, uh, a girl who who fucking grapples everyone, and she out grappled Miranda Maverick and out uh, struck her on the feet. Ariana Lipsky's in for a tough night. I don't know why that line's so close. Uh, Jasmine Jasvikas should be a big favorite, uh, like even bigger favorite. Um, I just think she's going to be able to out outdo Lipsky in every spot uh, of that fight. Uh, top of the prelims, we have Eamon Zahabi versus Pedro Munoz. Munoz, uh, dude, he's been a gatekeeper for a long time. Top 15 gatekeeper, only lost to big champions, only lost to top 15 guys. Uh, exposed Chris Gutierrez, uh, beat up Cody Garbrandt, knocked him out. Um, Rob Font win, like, he has a lot of impressive wins on his, uh, on, on, his, on his record, a lot of impressive losses on his record, because he takes these guys to decisions, which is fucking insane, um, even Dominic Cruz, uh, Eamon Zahabi showed a lot, a lot of improvement over the last four years, a lot, showing that he always improves with every fight, Yavid Basharat, um, or Javid Basharat, I guess, I'm pretty sure it's Yavid though, but, um, taking away his donut as well, uh, this is tough, man. This is tough because Eamon Zahabi's an underdog, and that's fucking laughable. Pedro Munoz is 38 years of age, getting into that age where he's starting to slow down. The Kyler Phillips fight, you could see he was slowing down, and I think, I think, if it was any other guy, if it was any other guy, um, Pedro Munoz would have mopped the floor with him if he was younger. Like, he should not have lost to Kyler Phillips. That's that's the problem here. 
I also said all of that wrong because I'm just thinking about so much shit in my head. He should not have lost to Kyler Phillips. If this was Pedro Munoz at a younger age, any other guy, he would have mopped the floor with him. Any other guy of like Kyler Phillips, Kyler Phillips included, any other guy mops the floor with him. He's at 30 years, 38 years of age. He's starting to slow down significantly. He's starting to show that he doesn't have all the gas that he used to have. He's starting to slow down at like the, the end of the second round like every other 38-year-old does. We're starting to see a lot of our fucking favorite fighters get out of here. And a lot of people are going to try and pick Pedro Munoz here thinking that he's going to uh, um, outbox Eamon Zahabi. Eamon Zahabi is not that impressive. You know, the Boshra win, you know, it's not the better Boshra brother. You know, it's a, it's a fluke win. You know, he's not that good. Dude, R Ricky Turcos, uh, Richie Lang, Java Boshra, he's on a roll. He's on a roll. He's with his brother. He's at TriStar. He's training with GSP. He's training with fucking... Um, uh, Faraz Zahabi, like, he, he has the best of the best, bro. He has the best of the best there. And Pedro Munoz has been training with the same fucking guys forever. And 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 Black House is just not the same anymore. They do not. They're losing a lot. A lot of these guys are, are having a lot of problems. Um, I guess their training style is just going out. Like, dude, training methods change, okay? Better better training methods come. Black House is still on their old shit. TriStar is always involving new things. I think TriStar is evolving Eamon Zahabi more than any other MMA gym could at this point. And I think Eamon Zahabi is going to be able to um, probably take down Pedro Munoz and and give him a tough night. I think Eamon Zahabi, especially as an underdog, is a huge pick. You're 36 years of age and is and ending his prime as a male. Like, it's 68 inches of reach, 5'8", at fucking 135. He's giant. He's giant. He's going to tower over Pedro Munoz. He's going to be at least 5, 10 pounds over him. Just, just in, in height and body mass by the time fight night comes. Give me Eamon Zahabi. I, I, I love him to win this fight. Uh, next, uh, We're going to start the main card here. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Mike Mallott versus Trevin Giles. Or Giles or Giles or fuckface. I don't, you, whatever you want to call him, Mike Mallott's going to beat the shit out of him. Uh, Mike Mallott did lose to Neil Magny last time around. Tried to take Neil Magny out in the first round. Tried to take him out in the second round and just gassed because Neil Magny is tough. Even though he just lost, who did he lose to? Jordan Sombrito, Neil Magny? Got knocked out? Michael Morales, excuse me. How did I fuck that up? My, they're not even in the same weight class, Jordan Sombrito and Michael Morales. That's insane. Um, they just wear yellow shorts. Um, Mike Mallott is probably going to choke Giles up. I mean, Giles is a little bit chinny. Um, the protest fight, that straight left just fucking took him out. Drikas, that right cross, took him out on the feet. Michael Morales took him out on the feet. Mike Mallott is probably going to take him out on the feet, but I don't think he has the same power that these other guys have. I think he's going to probably take him down, get him into an arm, uh, arm triangle position, and just choke him out. I don't think Trevin Giles has any business being inside this fight. I don't think he's going to get even close. I don't think he's fought even close to the fucking level of caliber of fighters that he needs to fight to, to have a chance against Mike Mallott. Didn't last two rounds against Drikas. Didn't last th two rounds against fucking Protes. Didn't last a round against Gabriel Bonfim, who's just fucking killing everyone <sighs> fought fucking roman delizzi at what 170 185 this is tough man this is a problem lost a gm3 yeah he's gonna get submitted trevin giles is gonna get choked up mike mallott's a huge prospect here you can't take his last loss into consideration seeing as neil magny literally got fucking killed and brought back to life by the hands of god uh mike mallott it was super impressive talent he is here to stay he is here to fuck people up and he's going to get another finish victory like he he's never been he's never been to a decision trevin giles is not the guy that's going to take him to the decision i think he's going to choke him out it is what it is. I still can't believe Trevin used to be 185. What the fuck? I forgot about that. Next on the main card, we have Marc-Andre Barriol versus Dustin uh, Stoltzfus. We're going uh, Marc-Andre Barriol. Uh, big pressure brawler. Dustin Stoltzfus just got knocked out by Bruno Fajara. Marc-Andre Barriol can take a shot. And uh, Dustin Stoltzfus is going to get caught inside the fire. I think he's going to be just leaving his chin up a little bit too high in the air whenever he gets into the, the cross... Uh, the crossfire and Mark Andre Barrel is going to take him out inside the second round. I think Dustin Sulsa is going to get through the first round, maybe get chin once or twice, get dropped to the ground, maybe hit Mark Andre with something big and 
we're gonna think we're gonna see like the fight of the night and then Dustin's just gonna get fucking railed I, I, I like he's just he, he he's been getting knocked out by guys he, he don't have super big like power punching he's been getting knocked out by guys like a spinning elbow like is a little bit rough especially he got double clipped by it like he was already rocked by the first one and he got clipped by the second one like 30 seconds later which is kind of fucking insane seeing as he didn't defend it at all and he just kind of sat there against the cage Mark andre Barrel is just gonna walk forward bro uh Julian Marquez win is very indicative of that he's probably going to be similar to that win uh he just hasn't really had a big win since and i think this is it i think this is where uh, mark andre burial gets his uh, big win gets a knockout victory inside uh, a canadian arena and he gets back on side that uh, that win column i mean he's 34 years of age he's if he loses here he's out so and there's a lot of contenders at 185 man there's a lot of people coming out of the the regional scene and the ufc right now are not taking guys lightly there as soon as guys have two or three losses are getting kicked out and i'm sure mark andre is no uh no fucking exception to the rule even though he's been inside the ufc for a long time but starting off with a three fight skid's pretty fucking impressive to be able to come out of that and still be inside the ufc so i think mark andre burial gets it done especially against dustin solsfos who hasn't changed his game at all he still does the same shit still tries to do the same game plan uh it never works um next on the main card we have uh kyle machado versus uh brendanson hibero taking hibero as an underdog plus 135 he's going to knock out machado machado is a little bit skinnier i think he's like what five pounds lighter than he was last time no, he's still he's still the same weight, but he looked he looked a little bit better on the scale. Um, Hibero is just a very very big striker. Uh, took out Lopez, who I think was like one of the biggest favorites on the contender series card. Yes, he was, um, and he's very very powerful. Uh, a lot more powerful than Machado. Machado is going to try and take him down about a hundred thousand times, and if he doesn't take him down, um, Hibero is going to knock him out because he's going to gas. And I think Machado's gonna gas. I think we're gonna just see a knockout. Dante Mays is piecing him up on the fucking feet, and Dante Mays sucks. Okay, Dante Mays is literally ass. And if Dante Mays can stuff a takedown, Hibero can stuff a takedown. Problem being, Hibero is going to weigh in tomorrow at whatever two forty or something, because this is that heavyweight, and Hibero's moving up because he can't fucking take a shot anymore, and he feels like fighting these bigger guys. He has a bigger shot. If he moves like uh, Kennedy and Jetsuku did at heavyweight. These past couple weeks, I don't remember if it's the last weekend or the weekend before. If he moves like well, the Kennedy and Jetsuku, he's going to fuck up Kyle Machado. He's going to fuck him up. He's going to piece him up so bad that he's going to give up in the second round. And that's because he's going to stuff a takedown. Kyle's going to be like, fuck, let's use my jab. Oop, I'm not long enough. I'm going to get fucked up. Even though I'm 6'4", I'm, let's try another takedown. Oop, Hibero got away from me. I'm fucked. And Hibero's just going to land left hook, right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook, right hook. He literally swings from the hip, bro. He doesn't care. And Machado does not have the power to take him out. I just don't believe it. So we're going with Hibero by knockout. Probably going to be like a plus 170 to plus 200. Fucking take it all day. Next on the main card, Derek loses versus, versus Jonata Dines. I think we're taking D Niss in the I hate it because I want to pick D Lewis. But I was thinking about this today <clears throat> when I was thinking about this fight. What would happen if Biggie Boy fought Derek Lewis? And I think what would happen is Derek Lewis would get leg kicked 15 times. He'd be like, ooh, I probably should have moved in a little bit quicker. And then he would have started moving in and he, ooh, pop with a jab. He's like, ooh, let's move in again. Ooh, pop with a jab. Ooh, I'm getting fucked up. Because Derek Lewis really relies on those hands and if he doesn't get that right or left hand he's not winning the fight he needs to get a knockout dinis is gonna sit at range bro he is a kickboxer he is a glory kickboxer i really want i'm probably going to bet Derek lewis because i want to see the black beast win but dinis is probably going i'm gonna pick dinis because dinis should win he should sit at range he should use his uh his is just front kick he should just chop at the leg of, of Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis doesn't really switch stances that well. Really likes standing on that power foot. Really likes exploding quickly. Uh, Nassi Mental, uh, he did get a win over Nassi Mental after Nassi Mental sat on him for a round. Second round had a little bit of success, but Derek Lewis was coming on strong. Third round just fucking was so sick of his shit. He threw an overhand right from his fucking hip and just knocked Nassi Mental out. Just, he stumbled. Derek Lewis got on top of him, landed ground and pound and ended it. Dennis, I don't think is going to get close enough to where D. Lewis can fucking land something like that. D uh, D Derek Lewis is going to fucking have to like rush him. He's going to have to do something like the the, the Lima fight because because 
If Denise is smart, he'll sit at range, he'll kick, he'll fucking jab, he'll front kick, he'll land a nice high kick, he'll just step in for a counter. There's a lot of ways he can win. There's a lot more ways Denise can win than Lewis. We all love Derek Lewis, but he's fucking 39 years of age. Bro's almost 40. He literally says he just likes brawling. If he just likes brawling, Denise is just going to be more calculated. He's going to sit back and he's just going to like do what he does, man. He's a kickboxer. What, what, what do you expect him to do? You expect him to wade into fire? He's not going to wade into fire. He's got fucking kicks in his arsenal. Derek Lewis is not a fucking big kicks in his arsenal. He wants to get you with his fucking right hand. He wants to slump you. He wants to see you go out. He wants to take off his shorts and tell you how hot his balls are next we have the fucking co-main event of the evening if you guys do like this make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already we have rose nama Yunus versus aaron blanchfield blanchfield's probably going to just like run at her right just gonna try and wrestle her but if rose can just avoid the takedown which she usually does rose is very good at avoiding takedowns very good at keeping it on the feet Always likes slugging it out. If she, if she, especially as a fucking plus one hundred five underdog, if she keeps this on the feet, Aaron Blanchfield's in a fucking tough position, bro. Because Rose is not. This is not going to be another thing where she breaks her fucking finger against Manifera and she can't fucking throw hands. She's gonna throw hands. She's gonna fucking throw big hands. I'm pretty sure she dropped Tracy Cortez if I'm not mistaken. Literally hit her so hard her fucking eyelash flew off. Um, Aaron Blanchfield is not is not ready for this. She's 25 years of age. Rose is going to fuck her up. This is going to be bad. This is going to be really... I'm thinking about this now. Aaron Blanchfield is decent decent in the stand-up, bro, but she does not have the fucking high-level experience that Rose Nama Yunus has. She doesn't have the fucking championship experience that uh, Rose Nama Yunus has. Aaron Blanchfield has a 1-2, and she has a chokeout win over Jessica Andrade. That's her best fucking win. Maybe Talia Santos. But Santos still, like... Eh. It's like, bro. She fucking left the UFC, man. She was sick of it. It's just like your best wins being like JJ Aldrich, Molly McCain, Jessica Andrade, Talia Santos. It's like Talia Santos is impressive, very impressive victory. It, but like, Santos doesn't do well with big wrestlers. <clears throat> she doesn't do well with counter grappling at all. And Rose Nama Yunus is a very good counter grappler. She likes keeping it on the feet. She doesn't let girls take her down super easy. And uh, she's going to use that jab and use those uh, those one-two leg kick combos probably to get inside the range of Aaron Blanchfield where she can land a nice hook. I think she's going to probably drop Aaron Blanchfield once or twice and just get a decision victory. She's bigger than Blanchfield. She doesn't have the uh, the reach advantage, but she does have the frame. She's She always looks a little bit heavier inside that cage, especially at 125. Rose looks really fucking big. Uh, it's kind of insane, actually, because moving up from 115, you'd, you'd think... Like, she'd look a little bit smaller in there. She felt, Her frame felt up, like, good. She's, she's probably going to be able to fucking bully Aaron a little bit, too. Because Aaron always looks a little bit small in there. I don't know. She looks a little bit smaller than her competition, usually. She looks like she she just abuses the fuck out of her wrestling and hopes that it always works. <clears throat> We're going to move on to the main event of the evening. We have Brandon Moreno versus Amir Albazi. I'm going Brandon Moreno. Amir Albazi lost to Kaikara France last time around. Uh, beating cost is nothing. Uh, Francisco Figueredo, like, fuck off. Zuma, uh, Zuma Gulov, four years ago. Okay, Malcolm Gordon, four years ago. Yeah, that's your big fucking win, eh? Brandon Moreno literally was champ. Arguably got his championship status back against Brandon Royval and uh, Pantoja. He's fucking taking these guys to long split decisions. Uh, arguably won the Pantoja fight, I thought. Uh, three rounds to two. Uh, uh, Bre well, I think Pantoja won, but it could have gone the other way, I should have said. Brandon Roy Val, I think, did win the fight, but I again, Brandon Moreno could have won it. Um, he, like, he's still number one, in my opinion. He's still number one in the world uh, at flyweight. I don't see Brandon Royval. I don't think Brandon Royval should be ranked higher than him. I think it was a really close fight. I think Moreno's here to stay. I think Amir Albazi is going to have a big fucking problem in his hands when he realizes that uh, Brandon Moreno is a different level of competition than the other guys that he's been fighting. Kaikara France was his hardest fight ever. Amir Albazi lost that fight very clear, and he's fighting Brandon Moreno, who's a step up in competition and who wants the belt even more. Brandon Moreno's 30 years of age, who's even fucking younger than Amir Albazi, and has already reached gold. Amir Albazi is not winning this fight. He's going to try and just wrestle fuck Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno is not going to be there. He's not going to be there. He's going to counter grapple. He counter. He had grappled Davison Figueroa. He choked out Davison Figueroa, brother. 
brother, Amir al is not winning this fight. He's going to get outstruck. He, he, I bet you Brandon Moreno, the only way I see a Brandon Moreno losing is a cut. A big cut. And Amir al capitalizes on some swelling or something. Because Brandon Moreno is just going to outbox the fuck at Amir al He's going to Counter grapple the fuck out of Amir Albazi. All Amir Albazi is going to do is just going to wrestle. He's just going to try and force wrestling. Kaikar France did the same thing. He's going to fucking out grapple him. He's just going to force a force stand up, and Brandon Moreno is going to excel in the stand up. He's just better. He, like, Brandon Moreno's a BJJ black belt, I'm pretty sure. Still a problem on the fucking ground, bro. I'm sure he, his triangle's nasty. I'm sure Brandon Moreno's triangle is like one of the nastiest triangles inside Flyweight. You just haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it a lot, at least. I think he has like one or two, maybe. Instead of the UFC. Well, let's see. What's he got? Any triangles? He's guillotine, rear naked. He left the UFC at one point? That's interesting. Nope. Just guillotines and rear naked chokes. Bro, maybe a triangle by fucking Brandon Moreno and a scramble? That'd be epic. How epic would that be? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys this evening. We are a little bit late, but we were doing tape study. I think it's very important, especially when I want to be talking about these fights. We did do a little bit longer of a video, 35 minutes. It's not too bad. Uh, hopefully, you guys did enjoy. We'll be doing the best bets probably tomorrow. Um, if you guys did enjoy this, make sure to drop a like, and I will see you guys all on Saturday for the live stream. Peace.